Hi, Tom here. In this video, I'm going to be installing an Open Energy Mon setup uh, in my consumer unit behind me. So I'm just going to take you through what you get in the kit and the steps I'm going to take to just connect it into my consumer unit. Let's start by going through what I'm going to be installing today. The first part of the Open Energy Mon setup is the Emon VS. So this unit monitors the frequency and voltage of your electrical supply. You can just simply plug it in to a standard socket. You can also hardwire the connection if you wish. Um, it provides a USB-C power supply and it also has a data connection. The next part of the kit is an Emon TX. So this unit is actually responsible for monitoring the CT clamps. So there's connections on the front for six CT clamps and they can be configured from anywhere from 100 amps, I think down to 20, maybe less. Um, it also has some data connections on the back so you can connect temperature sensors and other bits and bobs. It operates wirelessly if necessary, but it also provides a USB port which can be used for data. It comes in a nice aluminium enclosure uh, and has little wings on the side which you can use for connecting the board uh, or connecting the unit onto the wall. The last piece of the puzzle is the Emon base. So this actually hosts all the software for logging uh, and access for the data gathered by the Emon TX and the Emon VS. So this can operate wirelessly, but as I've mentioned, you can connect the Emon base to the Emon TX via a USB cable. This can be connected then via Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And it's just the standard Raspberry Pi with the custom software running on it. The last piece of the puzzle, I guess, then are the CT clamps. I've got five of them installed already in my consumer unit. I had an electrician do that for me when they were adding a Henley block um, to sort my battery drain issue. I've done a video on that so you can check that out if you want to know more. Um, CT clamp is just like this. This one here is a 100 amp clamp and this is going to go on the main live that comes into the house and this will monitor all the power consumption across the entire house. And that's it. I should also point out that the Emon VS does connect to the Emon TX, so there's an RJ11 port on the front of this, so these connect together here. So essentially, they're the three parts. I'm going to be mounting those on a piece of uh, plywood. This is a 10 mil plywood, and I'm going to mount the Emon TX, the Emon VS, and the Emon base on here and then I'll fix this plywood to the wall. And that should give me a nice clean setup. So this is the piece of ply I'm gonna mount the units onto. Starting with the Emon VS, which I'll mount about halfway. Then we'll add the Emon TX. Now, they recommend this is mounted vertically to stop any dust or dirt getting into the connectors. So we'll follow that advice. The Emon VS will connect into the Emon TX like so, and then I'll be able to connect the six clamps in along here. And lastly, we'll put the Emon base around about here. I'm gonna mount this horizontally to avoid any dust getting into any of these connectors. Ideally, I would have liked to have mounted it this way, so the Ethernet port was facing the comms closet. But due to the length of the USB-C cable, I won't be able to do that. We're also going to be connecting the Emon TX to the Emon base via USB. So we can disconnect the antenna and just use a standard USB-C cable. And that will actually plug in here. And 
and that will just plug into one of the ports on the Emon base. And then we'll plug the Emon VS into the Emon base for power. So the final arrangement will look something like that. And then I'll take an Ethernet cable from the comms closet and that will run down and connect into the Ethernet port of the Raspberry Pi, which is actually here. So let's get this marked up and fixed on now. So with the Emon VS, because we can't get through to the connector at the bottom, we have to mount it sort of one side at a time. So we can pop that in and then we can simply bend the cable out of the way. Oh. And put the screw in from the other side. So, all connected now, and I'm just going to gather up the loose USB cable. Okay, I'm done. The last thing to do now is get this mounted up onto the wall, get the CT clamps connected, and then we can power it on. All right, so I've installed the board on the wall now between my consumer unit and my comms closet. So as I mentioned, we've got five cables already. These are coming out of the side of the consumer unit. I've labeled them with a red tag for the 20 amp and an orange tag for the 50 amp. So I've got two 50 amp clamps in there. That's the oven and the hub. And then I've got three 20 amp and they cover the three ring mains. So that should give me a good idea across the entire house what the power usage is and how it's broken down so by default the box the Emon TX is configured as 100 50 50 20 20 20 so I'm going to mirror that now I also have to install the big 100 amp clamp so I'm going to put that uh, up here on the consumer unit um, to replace this little guy here which is my uh, Shelly EM on the clamp, there's actually an arrow, which you probably won't be able to see, but there's an arrow that indicates it must be installed in a certain orientation. So I'm going to open this up, check the arrow, oh, shimmy that to the side, and that just clicks around the cable, oh, like so. Click that until it's closed, pop it around, open the connection, open the little wrapping on this now, and then we'll bring this cable across. Now I'll take it behind this very, very untidy feed from my zappy, which I do need to clean up. So take that across there. And that'll plug in to the bottom. Then I'll take one orange that goes in next, another orange that goes in next, and then the last three reds. That's one, two, and last but not least, three. Now I will need to tidy these cables up, so I'll probably get a bit of trunking or ducting, but I do have quite a lot of cables I do need to sort out, so that's going to be an ongoing thing, I think. So that's all in now. We're all connected. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to disconnect the Shelly EM, or I'll unplug it. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the internet. So it's this one here, so I'll plug that out. 
and then I'm going to plug in my Eman VS and I should see some red lights somewhere. So we've got one red light up here and we should have a red light on the Raspberry Pi which I can see just in there. So we're all set up, now I can jump over to the web. I need to get an ethernet connection in here to the Eman base and I'll just run that into the comms closet now. I think I need to make up a cable so I'll do that now and then we can jump online and see how well this is working and just get it set up because I, I know we need to configure it um, because I've turned the radio off and we'll do that now. So here we are at my PC and I can see that my Eman Pi has been connected in correctly. So I'll open a new tab and we want to go to Eman Pi Local and that should open the Eman CMS. That's great. So we're now connected into the Eman base. I've already created an account which I should be able to get to from here. So if I just log in and now we've logged into the Eman CMS itself. So got a feeds folder here, no feeds are created. So if we jump over to the inputs, we should see my, yeah, great. So this is my Eman TX. So this has been connected in and it looks like it's already got some data. So that's connecting correctly and sending some data. Uh, and if we look down through the feeds, so we've got six P inputs and six E inputs. As I understand it, the P inputs are the instantaneous power and then the E inputs are the cumulative power. There's three down here for T1, T2, and T3. So these are the temperature sensors. And then there's a few other bits and bobs, which I'm not entirely sure about. I guess they're to do with the other ports on the unit. Uh, we then have a voltage, uh, the voltage value that comes from the Eman, well, that big brick, the Eman power supply, and then message, which I believe is a count of the messages. So we've had quite a few messages sent from this unit. So I've wired this kind of in the order of uh, the different pins that I, I put in. So starting at number one, that's the the mains. So that's the overall power for the house. Then we have oven. I think it's oven and then hob. And then we've got three ring mains. Now I don't know which the ring mains are, uh, but one of them I can see is pulling, yeah, so these are wattage values, so the values here, so I guess my wife is boiling the kettle or something, uh, so there's currently something pulling 1500 watts, and on one of the ring mains we've got 176 watts, we've got 5 watts in another one, so that's just stuff on standby, uh, and then the oven and hob are off, the hob is, I guess this is the hob, because that's kind of a sm not a smart hub, but it's got a digital interface, so that's probably pulling that power. Um, and then the E figures below that look way off. This, I think, is supposed to be kilowatt hours, so I'm not entirely sure what that is. 20,000 kilo, is that 20 million <clears throat> kilowatt hours? So my gut feel is that before I plugged in the actual CT clamps, uh, it was whilst it was powered up before I plugged in the CT clamps, perhaps it was just recording some crazy figures just because that would have in be no resistance on that. So I don't really know what these would, would record if I plugged them out. So that's quite big. So I'm going to kind of ignore them and see if I can find a way to reset or to zero the Emon TX. Uh, I, did rem I do remember reading that that's possible. So that's it. So uh, I'm not going to go through the setup uh, of this right now, mainly because I don't fully understand what's involved. But 
If we have a quick glance at the menu, there's a feeds, graphs, and visualizations. So what I think I'm supposed to do is add a feed, and then I can basically grab the data, and I can store it somewhere, and do processing on it and things like that. So if we go into the inputs, uh, I think we can create a feed from here. So if I want to click on the little spanner, yeah, so I can then create a feed. I can log this to feed, or I can convert the power to kilowatt hours, accumulates, there's different calibrations. There's different sort of processes I can add, uh, which will pro happen every, I think it's on like a fixed period. So you've got, yeah, so I can say like every 10 seconds, I want to log the power, so if I click that. So then I think, as I understand that, that will now create, and it will log the value coming from the Emon TX. And if we jump over to the feeds now, I should have a new feed. And then, yeah, so that produces the graph then. Um, so obviously that's empty at the moment, but that will eventually, I suppose, build up as it starts logging the data coming from the Emon TX. All right, that was painless enough. I expected to have to trick around with the uh, USB connections or something like that, but it all seems to be A-OK. -okay. Uh, if we have a glance then, if I go back to, say, here, let's see what the rest of these are. Okay, so this is like an admin panel. So this is giving me the status of, I guess, the various services. I had this giving me RAM, disk, networking, MySQL, and bits and bobs. There's an update panel. Update. Okay, so I must be able to update OS, yeah, firmware, bits and bobs, okay. Component, these must be all the different bits and bobs, again, inside the Emon base. There's a serial monitor, which is closed. I believe you can use the serial monitor to talk to the Emon TX. Yeah, so if I wanted to configure this, um, I can. Uh, there's like a log, and then you've got users. Um, what else have we got? Probably have Wi-Fi, which doesn't count for us. We can get sync. So I understand that we can basically synchronize all the data, and we can push that up to the cloud rather than saving it locally. We've done that one. That's the update. The schedules. Processes, devices. So there's my Emon TX connected. There's the Emon Hub, which is the thing that talks to between the Emon CMS and the Emon TX, I think. And then we can obviously create some graphs. Uh, and what I what I don't immediately see is an MQTT output, but I'm I'm guessing that's going to be in there somewhere because uh, we want to be able to send that data. Uh, Emon Hub. Okay. okay. So I don't see that immediately in there, but I, I, I would imagine that there's an MQTT setup. Oh, yeah, there is an MQTT server. So that's currently logging to itself. So we would be able to either could probably divert that somewhere else or yeah I'm not going to dig into that now but that's it so that's my Emon CS system up and running now which is great I'll have a play around with this and see if I can kind of log some data uh, I need to figure out from the inputs which is which Based on the, the power input for the P6, I'm guessing this is probably the upstairs because we've got my PC plugged in, and my wife's laptop, etc. Monitor will be on. This is probably the, the P1. I thought it would be the, old, the the power for the overall house, but those figures don't kind of they don't kind of add up. So I'll need to have a little dig around of this and try to understand it a little bit more and see if I can't reset the data completely and just try and wipe down some of these huge values. Okay, so after a lot of tinkering, I discovered that the reason I was getting really dodgy data was because 
I was using a cheap USB-C cable that came with a, like, you know, a little Parkside lamp. Uh, I don't think it was able to transmit the data properly. I'll tell you how I found uh, the problem. So I was originally trying to use this serial monitor uh, to basically zero out the values. And what I found was that whenever I was connecting, I didn't see this TTY USB zero value. I only saw the AMA zero and the S zero. And whilst I could connect to the AMA zero, I couldn't, I wasn't able to send commands or anything. So after looking through some forums and doing a bit of digging, initially said that this can happen with the USB zero, that the USB port can be upside down. So there's some reason why in the design it's not reversible and, and that's fine. So initially I swapped the cable around. I tried it in both orientations. No joy. At that point, I had that lightning bolt moment where I remembered that some USB-C cables aren't capable of transmitting data. I've had that with uh, microcontroller units and stuff where I've been trying to program them. Nothing happens. So I just swapped the cable out with one that I knew to be data capable and refreshed Emon Pi here, refreshed the, uh, the Emon CMS and the USB zero appeared. And if I now look at the inputs, I actually have values that are far more in line with what I expect. Uh, for example, now the tumble dryer is on. So the house now is using just a little over a kilowatt and I can see the proper breakdown. And the P4 would be the, this must be the house's uh, circuit or maybe that's the oven or I've got this. Anyway, uh, yeah. So P4 would be one of the ring mains and that's obviously the one for the kitchen and the utility. So that must be the tumble dryer. This is probably the upstairs. Then P1, P2, that's the hob and the oven, and then and, and P1 is the main. Uh, I do have two of them now for some reason. Um, so I think I can delete that one. So that's better. And I also found that you'll notice too that the E values are a lot better. And I was able to do that by using the serial config and basically sending a, a Z to the Emon TX and that resets, that zeros all the values. So to do that, you stop the Emon hub. Uh, I can then connect. And it also, you'll also notice now this panel populates correctly with the setup of the different clamps. So that's the sizes of the clamps. This is the default and it's got this face correction built in. So you can see that's correctly populated now. And then if I just send a Z, It'll say energy value set to zero. We'll stop the serial, start the Emon hub. We'll jump back into the inputs. It does reappear. I need to understand what's going on here, but you'll see now after a few seconds, these should basically go back down. This one probably more so than the rest. As the Emon hub starts itself up and they've effectively now zeroed themselves out. So that's good to know. I'll need to dig into why I'm getting two of these units now. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe now I need to turn. Ah, uh, maybe now I need to turn the radio off. So it, it could potentially be picking one up over the radio. So stop the Eman Hub again. Start this, and then I think we send W zero. And the RF is now off and I'll stop the serial I'll start the Emon hub again go back to the inputs I'll delete this one again with any luck that won't reappear okay so glad I got to the bottom of that um, yeah oh it's reappeared Anyway, that's a job for that's a job for another day. But 
that's it. It's all set up now. Uh, the values are kind of reading now, as I expect, which is great. The next step will be to figure out how to turn this thing into a proper energy monitor, perhaps get these values feeding into Home Assistant as well. And I'll also need to do some detective work and figure out uh, which of these is which in terms of the oven and the hob, and then which ring main each of four, five, and six points do. But otherwise, looking good. That was USB cables as a side. Very, very painless. Um, and whilst there's a lot going on, I think I kind of feel like it's relatively straightforward kind of now that I've played around with it for a few minutes. So that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions uh, or you'd like to know more, please do use the comment section. Uh, please do click the like button if you've enjoyed this video. And if you're interested to know how I get on with this over the coming weeks and months, please do subscribe. I'll definitely post another video about how I've set this thing up once I get it kind of all set up properly. Um, so yeah, I'd appreciate um, a like or a, a subscribe. That's it for now. Uh, I'm Tom and thanks for watching.